All right. So uh, speaking of mobile, um, you know, it's you know, it's needless to say it's a um, it's a phenomenal uh, space to be in right now in terms of a number of mobile connections and in terms of um, the, the the amount of revenue to be made in this space. So this slide is just stating the obvious how important that the whole mobile space has become in a short span of time. Um, now, the smartphone is, is going to continue to grow. Um, this is kind of, a, kind of a newer slide based on some uh, recent data and uh, just showing you kind of the trend uh, and it's not expected to stop. I mean, if you look at 2011 to 2016, it's a 24% um, annual growth rate. So um, it's pr pretty um, amazing how fast um, the space is growing and the opportunities there, obviously. Um, and there's, uh, you know, for us, we look at the mobile space as there are just a lot of areas for um, continued innovation, right? You have the CPU, obviously, ton of things with the CPU, um, the, the GPU, the graphics, uh, you know, multimedia, the connectivity stuff, sensors is a big one. Um, there's a lot of things going on with, you know, m multiple sensors going into, um, into your phone and also, you know, all the display technologies. So a lot of stuff going on in terms of innovation in the smartphone space. Uh, you know, I, I like this slide because it, it, it's kind of interesting. And um, I, was, I was talking to somebody a few days ago about this. Uh, two, three years ago, when I was talking about Snapdragon and, you know, mobile stuff, um, I had a slide which basically said, um, we are bringing the PC experience to your mobile because of all the, you know, processing power that we have. So you don't have to wait for your, you know, browser to, to uh, you know, your pages to download. You don't have to, you, you get good gaming experience. You get good multimedia experience. So my slide was, hey, I'm bringing you PC experience on your mobile. Um, my new slide says, I'm bringing the mobile experience to your PC and many other things. And the reason for that is not only the mobile power and performance has caught up to the PC, but it has actually exceeded it in terms of um, you know, being always on. You know, I rebooted this thing and it took me 10 minutes just now because uh, I wanted a fresh start. Um, my mobile reboots in you know, less than 10 seconds. It's always connected. It's, it's uh, power efficient, so you get all, you know, um, all day battery life. Um, and a lot of those good things actually apply to other things. You know, a tablet is obviously a good example. But now we're talking about smart TVs and automotive and medical robotics. So a ton of things. Um, the expectation of the consumers is now the smartphone experience, not the PC experience. Nobody wants the PC experience anymore. Um, and you know, some of the things we've done in the mobile space is redefining computing, um, whether it's you know, the, the PC space or whether it's you know, now one of the things I want to talk about is the embedded computing. So you have things like um, you know, high resolution screens are, are now you know, the, the, the norm. I, I just saw somebody with a 1080p high definition uh, smartphone. It's pretty impressive. Um, you know, everything is responsive. It's always on connectivity and uh, rich multimedia experience. But at the same time, you get sleek and ultra ride. You get longer battery life and you get thermal efficiency. So that's, that, I think, sums up what has happened in the last few years in terms of the mobile um, SOCs or systems on a chip. Um, and a couple of things, actually, this is, this, this is now where I think um, some of the concepts apply to everything else, is uh, one of the things with mobile, obviously, was some of the I.O. limitations, right, in terms of you know, user input, in terms of um, you know, being able to, to uh, to bring in you know, things like, for example, pens and um, being able to interact with things around you. Um, and with, you know, or cables, you know, one of the challenges was always, hey, you know what, I can do um, console quality graphics on, your on my phone, but the problem was I had to come up with a cable and hook it up and you know, need, it, need it an HDMI and all that. Um, we've solved some of those things with things like Wi-Fi display, augmented reality, um, ultrasound, so you know, using audio to um, to detect your you know a pen. A pen can be emitting these uh, ultrasonic 
waves, and then the, the microphones in your phone would be receiving it, so it knows where the pen is. So things like that, and um, also gestures, you know, uh, touch-free gestures where you don't even have to be next to your phone, could be sitting on your um, uh, you know, coffee table. You could be controlling it. So, so here's where I argue that um, the next disruption is to do with taking all this goodness that's been um, developed in the mobile space, um, you know, smartphone, tablet space, and taking it into everything else. Okay? Um, I took this from, um, from a recent um, article from, uh, from IDC. This is your um, embedded devices, right? And this is a very large field. We're talking about, you know, um, your appliances, you know, your fridge, washer, dryer, to, um, you know, your, your automotive stuff in your car and robotics, all the medical devices um, around you. And um, this is showing the traditional embedded versus the intelligent embedded, which is what they call, um, you know, any embedded product that has some kind of intelligence or some kind of uh, processing capability. Um, so I, I'm going to talk about Internet of Everything. I'm going to talk about Digital Sixth Sense. Um, they're talking about embedded platforms converging with consumer device application platforms. Um, and also, you know, now have touch screens everywhere. I think that's something that has to do with that convergence from the smartphones. And uh, now you have Android-based cameras, TVs, um, you know, automotive uh, equipment, and, you know, things like digital signage. You know, um, it always reminds me of Minority Report when, you know, he's interacting with everything on the display. All that is becoming reality, you know, with, with things like computer vision and, and uh, you know, gestures. You can basically go in, the digital sign would recognize you know who you are, you know, using facial processing, and then we'll give you your information tailored to you. And you can control it with gestures. It's, all, all that cool stuff is, is now becoming today. And uh, our, our, my argument is, that's the next disruption, um, you know, now taking um, the embedded space and uh, putting all this stuff in there and, and coming up with a lot of other applications that don't exist today. So in terms of everything, I think that's obvious. Um, you know, there's just so many things around you um, today that have now some processing capability and also um, have internet connectivity, which opens up, you know, all these um, applications for, um, for in interactiveness, for um, computing, embedded computing. Uh, so it's, it's, it's just everywhere. Everything around us, I think, is becoming intelligent and connected. So just some examples. You've know, you got the automotive space, industrial, health and fitness, home. And I think this is, this is the next wave. Um, the, the, the first wave was putting you know, um, things as an app on your phone. You said, hey, you know what? You know, I have a multimedia app. I can watch uh, videos on my phone. I can um, watch ads on my phone. Um, the next wave is taking some of these other industries that um, don't have any, any of that, you know, capability and just reshaping those industries. And this is just a few examples. This is just an example of what we call connected home. Again, um, you, you will notice um, I just bought a, a thermostat. I don't know if you guys heard of it, the Nest thermostat. And, uh, you know, I'm, I was controlling my uh, temperature just on my way uh, over here because I forgot to turn off my, uh, my heater, right? And it's all Wi-Fi based. And who knows, everything else in your uh, home may eventually be like that. So uh, connected home is another concept. You, you could be doing something in one, one uh, room and then send it over to another room and uh, just completely um, seamless between all these uh, various displays. Um, in, in your home. And then the concept of digital sixth sense, uh, which I think is something that, again, is originating in the mobile space, but it's, uh, it's converging into all these other things, is the idea of contextual awareness. Is your phone knowing exactly where you are, what you're doing, where the phone is, and uh, you know, what is important to you? Um, there's a few things that Google has done with that, and a lot of other companies are doing um, stuff with this uh, concept of digital six sets. Um, uh, your, your, your device uh, knowing where you are and giving you relative, relevant stuff based on your context. So here's the first argument. Um, why are the 
application processors. These are the SOCs that you find in your, um, in your mobile device. Why do I think um, those are the best solution for the embedded space? Okay? Um, first one is really obvious, um, power efficiency. Right? You have no fan, no noise. A lot of the stuff that we're talking about, you don't, first of all, you don't have the space to put in a, you know, a fan sink. Second of all, um, you, you don't want the, the, the noise and you don't want the, the high temperatures that comes with some of the you know, other types of processors. So I think this is the big one. And um, also lower cost power supplies. A lot of these devices can be battery operated and can give you all day battery life. So that's the first one. And then the um, second part is all this multimedia features that have, um, that have been developed in the, um, in the mobile space. Things like having multiple uh, you know, HD cameras, um, HD displays, um, things like um, you know, sensors, which we talked about. A ton of sensors that now are working um, and you know, probably your average smartphone has four, five, maybe six different sensors. Um, going on inside. And uh, things like location services is a big one. Um, a lot of development in that space. And computer vision. So I think because of these capabilities and because of that energy efficiency, um, you know, these SOCs from the mobile space are the best solution for, for the embedded space. And, um, you know, Snapdragon, which is the chipset that I work with, um, you know, has, has the CPU, the high performance CPU. The latest one we announced at CES, which was Snapdragon 800, has four cores, each running up to 2.3 gigahertz. That's faster than um, what I have in my laptop. So in terms of CPU, in terms of energy efficiency, GPU, multimedia, and also um, the, the SOC comes with a digital signal processor, a dedicated DSP, and so many things you can do with that. Um, if you have this, you know, the, this, uh, level of processing in your embedded product. This just kind of shows you where the CPU has, the, the mobile CPU has become. So this is the, uh, the CPU you have, it's called Crate, and the Snapdragon. In terms of where it is, in terms of performance versus power. So even though the performance has caught up, the power consumption is, is less than half of, um, of the PC processor. And then the GPU, the same thing. This is last generation C, uh, GPU, uh, which was no slouch, um, uh, you know, in terms of uh, graphics processing. Um, the new generation almost doubles that, um, that performance. And you get things like more advanced uh, lighting effects. And you can imagine things you can do with the GPU. It's not just gaming. There's, uh, you know, UIs. There's, uh, you know, uh, processing of, you know, if, say, you have a digital s signage, you want to be able to, um, show high quality 3D graphics. So having a powerful GPU is also very important. And then I talked about the DSP. Um, now the DSP, um, one of the advantages is it's an open architecture. There's a DSP access program and um, you have a lot of tools to be able to interface with the DSP and do things like gestures. I talked about image processing, um, all the camera stuff, um, voice quality, um, high definition audio. So ton of things you can offload to the DSP and get really good performance. So the other thing that I think is important with, this, with, with the smartphone SOCs is the fact that all these um, technologies and all these subsystems are integrated into one chip. So you know, if, you're, if you are thinking about, for example, putting a, a chipset, one of these into your, um, to your you know, robotic application or, you know, a digital signage, you're not dealing with multiple different chips and trying to figure out how to connect them all together. They're all in one chip. And you're only interfacing with one chip. So you have the chipset, you have power management that comes with it, connectivity like Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all those things is integrated inside the same chip. Um, so I think that that is a, another um, big factor when you think about putting a smartphone or a mobile SOC into an embedded device. And, you know, Android, again, I probably don't have to tell you guys, um, you know, what has um, been the growth of Android. Um, so I guess my second argument is uh, you have the smartphone SOCs, which I think are really powerful and, and really uh, tailored for the embedded space. And you have an um, OS like Android, 
which is dominant in that space. And my argument is Android is also great for running all those embedded applications and all those embedded projects. So you obviously have the market share. So um, you know, that gives you a, a very large developer community like you guys. I think that's probably the number one thing about Android is having this, this large developer base. Um, you have, uh, obviously, it's royalty free, so no charge. Um, Linux is the foundation. And um, you know, the, as an as a embedded developer you know, using Android on, on an embedded product, you, you obviously have access to the source code. So you know, as they say, the destiny is in your hands. And um, there's massive investment going into Android. I think that's another big one. You got the developer community, and you got the investment from all the other you know, OEMs and ODMs and everybody else who is, um, who's leveraging Android. So uh, to me, those are some of the reasons that make Android a uh, great OS for these types of platforms. OK, so I'm going to walk through uh, just an example of a um, development kit that's intended for um, embedded applications, whether it's creating a project, a product, um, writing drivers for various components. Um, and um, this, is, this is the one that um, is uh, based on the Qualcomm technology. But like I said, I think that the concepts of what I'm talking about applies to just about any smartphone SOC with, you know, that has a development kit like this. So um, Dragon Board, I'm going to go through it. Actually, I'm going to show you guys um, you know, all the interfaces and, uh, and uh, as much detail as you need. Um, but at, at a high level, you know, it's a powerful, it's feature rich, um, versatile, and um, easy to use. And the reason I say easy to use is because it's ready for development out, out of the box. So, you know, your Android is preloaded, um, you have all the documentation that you need. So, all, all those things are, are included with this type of kit. Um, the audience or the target users would be, you know, the, the um, software vendors, whether it's a software developer or somebody who's doing middleware. Um, it would be hardware component vendors, um, guys who are you know, uh, trying to get their component to work with um, the Snapdragon SOC. And uh, the embedded market, these are the guys who are creating uh, new products outside of smartphones and tablets. And universities is another one. There's a lot of R&D going on in the, in the uh, university space. And folks are using these uh, platforms to do their prototyping and, and uh, research. So um, the model is actually um, is interesting because you know, if I came up here and said, look, this is a Snapdragon chipset. And it has all these technologies integrated. It sounds really complicated. So if I wanted to take that chipset, and uh, put it into a robotic application or put it into some kind of medical device, um, it's probably, probably going to require a massive amount of engineering, a lot of NRE. And uh, that's why typically the, the large OEMs and ODMs are doing it for you know, smartphones and tablets. Uh, millions of dollars investment goes into you know, any of these new designs. So, um, so I'm up here telling you, hey, you know, go put Snapdragon in your, um, in your embedded device. Um, well, obviously, that's not going to work out. So um, what, what we thought would, would work is taking the Snapdragon chipset, which is pretty complicated, putting, on a, putting it on a module, put all the um, important stuff, like memory and uh, the, you know, the, some of the key components, in, uh, on one module so that it takes out all the design complexity out of the equation, and this module is all, also comes with a carrier board that it plugs into so that you can do your prototyping, you can do your development. Um, but if you wanted to go into production with some kind of a product, you would just go get the SOM or a system on a module, and you would use that rather than going and figuring out how to design Snapdragon into you know, your, your project. So that's the, that's the thought process with this type of thing. And this kind of shows you, so the SOM which includes things like um, the, the um, chipset itself with power management, um, includes the, the memory, the EMMC, um, HDMI, some, some key connectors like micro SD, location, connectivity. All of that is included, so you don't have to worry about it. And then it, it goes into a carrier board, which gives you power, gives you, you know, sensors, additional USB 
con you know, Ethernet connectivity, a lot of debug interfaces, JTAG, um, and a lot of things. So the concept is, um, you know, the, the SOM, which is the engine, um, is on this, this dev kit. Then you can use the dev kit to, your, to do your prototyping and development. And then if you wanted to go in production, you would use the SOM. So the SOM is fairly small, as you can see. Um, comes with some of those things that I mentioned, and um, it's standalone production ready. The development kit, on the other hand, is, m is more of a developer platform. So the idea with, the, with, this, with this whole kit is that you can you know, get all the software tools, all the accessories that you need, and um, you know, right away, you can begin development. Right? And the development could be something as simple as taking a, I know a lot of people who, do, who, who are, who are use, looking at medical um, applications. So they took medical sensors and hooked it up to this and got them to work. So that's something very simple to um, actually creating a complete product. Um, you, know, you, you connect your display, you connect your uh, sensors, you connect your camera, um, all, all the accessories that you need and create your product. Um, and do all your development using this platform. Um, I, by the way, I'm going to make the slides available on PDF. I apologize, I haven't done it beforehand. Um, but the links will be there in terms of if you, if you guys are more in interested in um, getting access to the platform and all that, you can, can go to the links. So I put all the links here um, for those of you who are interested. Um, and this is, again, a blown up, close up look at what the SOM looks like. It has a standard, you know, dim like uh, connector. So, um, you know, if you, if you were to develop something out of this and you wanted to actually uh, go into production, um, it would be a fairly standard interface to put on your uh, baseboard for whatever your design is. Um, Again, there's just a ton of things here in terms of what, uh, what you have. So I'm not going to go through them one by one. And this is the SOM now on the development kit and all the interfaces that you, you get um, with the development kit. Um, the, uh, another good thing I thought about this is um, it's a mini ATX form factor. So if you wanted to actually um, even go around and maybe showcase something using this, you can put it in an enclosure and uh, make it look fairly decent. Okay. So, now let me try if I, see if I can speak your language, um, even, though, even though I'm not an Android developer. Um, but I try to put uh, a few simple slides, just kind of walk you through uh, on what would be the, the process for taking something like this and going all the way from, um, you know, the, the the uh, low-level Android framework all the way up to your app. And I'm going to highlight a few things that I think are, are relevant because of the argument that I made at the beginning, which is the idea that with all the investment that's going into you know, an SOC for a smartphone, uh, all the investment that's going into uh, creating various technologies and various uh, types of software, for, um, for the Android space, all of that goodness um, is now available to you because you know, that, that investment is already done and you can take advantage of all that if you're doing um, an embedded project. So, so that, that's why I'm going to kind of walk through this and point out some of those things that you can take advantage of um, when you're doing this type of development. Okay? So, um, starting with the, um, with the Android software platform, um, you know, as far as you know, getting started, obviously this is where you would start. Um, you, know, you get the dev kit that I talked about. Um, the company who, who created this dev kit is uh, it's called Intrinsic, and they, they call their SOM um, OpenQ. So that's the name of their system on a module that has the Snapdragon chipset. Now, now you are at the stage where you're building your Android software platform. A um, couple of sources to get the uh, software. Um, there's a place called uh, Code Aurora Forum, which is where all the open source software for um, uh, Snapdragon processors is hosted. And uh, also on the intrinsic side is all the non-open source stuff. 
So, um, you know, things like, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the firmware for GPU, for wireless LAN, uh, GPS, and all that stuff. And once you purchase the Dragon Board, then you go get access to all, um, all that code uh, as part of, the, part of the, the dev kit. So, um, you know, step by step, how do you build this? Um, you know, four, four uh, major steps. I try to simplify it as much as I can. Uh, basically, you go get the, um, uh, the open source software um, for the, you know, this particular processor that's in, in the SOM. Um, and it's, it's pretty easy to, to go download that from Code Aurora forum. Um, there's, there's a wiki site if you need additional support in downloading the code. Um, then you go get the uh, specific release. So now you have the code for the application processor, um, but we have a platform that's based on that application processor. So all the additional code will be available on the intrinsic website. So you can go download that. You download all the patches. And um, there's, a, there's actually a programming guide in case you want to you know, uh, download other things or, or uh, sort of get more detail on programming it. Uh, then you build it. It's the standard build process for um, building your Android um, OS. And uh, then you load it up. So this is standard um, ADB interface. And you would use Fastboot to do the, to do the load. Um, you also have JTAG support, if that's, that's uh, something you use in your, uh, in your environment. And um, you know, basically, all the standard ADB and Fastboot commands um, will work on, on this dev kit. Okay, so that's, uh, that's obviously the first step. Now, um, the second step is um, the, uh, your, your, all the application libraries. Now, there's all the standard Android application libraries that are obviously available to you. Um, but one, but, but the, the advantage here is that you get all these other um, advanced technologies that are developed on Snapdragon. So all of that comes along for the ride. Uh, and um, I'm going to touch on a few of them. Uh, basically, there are a lot of technologies that are built for Snapdragon. There's some that are tuned for Snapdragon, and some that are enhanced for Snapdragon. Um, but the idea is um, that if you take advantage of these technologies, um, you obviously get better performance and better power efficiency. Because everything, those things will be, will be optimized for the hardware that you guys are, you know, that's inside the, the project. So um, another good link, whoops, um, another good link to, uh, to go to, um, there's, a, there's a website called Qualcomm Developer Network, um, which is accessible at developer.qualcomm.com. Um, a lot of these technologies, along with sample, code, SDKs, APIs, all of that is available um, on that website. And here's an example, uh, or examples of some of those things that are available. Um, I probably don't have time to go through all of them, uh, but let me start with Snapdragon SDK, um, which is, um, was the idea of, we had all these technologies that you could um, develop for on the Snapdragon, um, but it was kind of difficult to do it. So, um, so creating an SDK, making it um, a lot easier to do, um, to incorporate some of these features in your application. Um, there's things around camera, facial processing, sensors, and touch-free gestures. I'll give you a couple examples. Um, one example, and I think this is um, a good example for if you're building a computer vision uh, type application, is the idea of being able to um, detect a face, recognize a face, but even go further in and recognize, you know, eyes, nose, smile. So, you know, for example, if, you, if you're detecting a face and you want to make sure that their, you know, their eyes are looking at a certain space, you can get all those events, and it's very easy to detect that um, using this, this SDK. Um, so it allows you to do things like tracking audience engagement to see if the person is looking at something or are they looking away. Uh, for sensors, um, I talked about um, the contextual awareness. So it's the idea of um, knowing where things are and, uh, you know, even things like ambient temperature, you know, the um, motion sensors, you know, if you're, if you're developing something that's going to be on the person, 
um, knowing you know where they are. Um, also things like indoor location also uses um, uh, all these sensors. So you can easily access and get things like um, directional tap, shake, tilt, face up, face down, all those things. And then touch-free gestures, I think that's also really important in embedded space because you may not always have a touch screen on whatever your application is. So you can use gestures for control. And this would be you know, doing things like this, um, kind of sci-fi stuff, but um, it's possible and actually looks really cool and it's becoming very reliable um, because of the, you know, the, the processing capability that's inside these processors. So you can actually now um, play games using um, gestures. So um, I was actually uh, checking out this demo where somebody was playing um, Angry Birds with, uh, with gestures. So rather than you know, touch, just take it like this, let it go. So that, all of that is possible. I don't know if, why you want to do it, but you know, it's, it looks pretty cool. Um, so things like uh, you know, near swipe, far swipe, controlling the cursor. Um, so if you're going up to a um, big, big screen at an airport, obviously it's very expensive to make that touch screen. So rather than making touch screen, you can uh, use gestures to move things and select things and so on. And then there's a lot of um, you know, things around multimedia um, with, uh, you know, with uh, high definition audio uh, and uh, video as well. Um, the one I'm really excited about is the uh, location. So with the embedded applications, there's a lot of um, you know, things where you can do with geofencing, uh, with indoor positioning. So all of that is easily accessible using this SDK. So, uh, and, and what are the, I guess, what are the benefits for the developers? I think I talked about this, but you got differentiation um, because your, you know, your app is not has all those features and is optimized on the hardware, um, is ease of use, is compatibility, and, uh, you know, part of the, being part of the ecosystem. Again, easy to download and install. You know, go get it from, from the developer.qualcom.com. And um, for Dragon Board, um, very simple. You download and install the SDK. I have all the steps of how you download the SDK and make it work. So you guys can kind of a reference for how you would do it. Um, very simple. Um, it recognizes the Dragon Board, and you know, all those uh, features will be available to you to uh, build into your app. Uh, a couple other ones I wanted to touch, touch on, um, all join. This is that concept of you know, the connected home and internet of everything. Um, a lot of times when you're developing an app that requires connectivity, um, it's, it's very difficult to deal with you know, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth and figure out how to connect those things and build a server and all those things that you would have to do to incorporate that. Um, all join, which is an um, open source SDK and a framework, um, it allows you to do peer-to-peer -peer, um, proximity-based connectivity without you know, requiring a server or anything like that. So basically, as soon as you know, the two devices are near each other, they're going to be able to communicate with each other um, without the need for um, uh, with taking all the complexity of the uh, connection um, out of it. So you don't have to worry about Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. It'll just pick the best one and connect the two using that. The other thing that um, I think is going to be um, also useful is uh, augmented reality. So this is the idea of um, you know, using, again, computer vision to add another layer um, of um, interactivity to everything around you. So it, it, I, I think it's becoming really big in the mobile space, but also a lot of applications in the embedded space um, with augmented reality. And then computer vision, I talked about it. A lot of, lot of cool applications, uh, you know, getting um, faster, more real-time image processing. Um, it's all built in um, in, the, uh, in the Snapdragon SDK. Then the last thing I wanted to talk about is um, some of the tools that are available. Um, there's a tool called Trep and Profiler, um, which allows you to profile your application for resource consumption. So one of the challenges both in mobile and embedded, is to write apps 
that um, are fast, are resource efficient, and also power efficient. So one of the ways you can get there is by profiling your application and making sure that you're not consuming too much resources. So Trepin, uh, one of the beauties of Trepin is it's on target. So it's an Android app. You run it on your, um, on your device, whether it's a dragon board or whether it's your um, embedded device. Um, and, and it doesn't even need to be running Snapdragon. Basically, it runs on any, any device um, that runs Android. And it uh, gives you things like CPU usage frequency, memory statistics, uh, and uh, also power consumption. So, and the beauty of this is you can do, um, you can get per app power consumption. So one of the challenges is, you know, when you look at, for example, your phone, your mobile phone, and you look at all the power statistics, it's actually on the system level, right? Whereas with this, you can actually get down to the application level and figure out exactly how much power your app is taking on the, um, at the, pow at the uh, battery uh, level, right? So, you know, you can probe your battery or you can use this app to exactly know what your uh, power consumption is. And then you can see statistics. You can even overlay some of these graphs over your, you know, your application. And uh, you, can even, uh, you can even read a variable inside your app using Android intents to, um, to see if you change something in your app, how does it affect your power consumption and your uh, resource usage. So a pretty powerful tool. And I think it's very relevant to developing whether it's an application or whether it's UI or whatever you're doing on, the, on an embedded device. And then finally, um, you know, now you're, you're uh, developing apps. And um, you know, I picked the, uh, one of the features of Snapdragon SDK, which is the camera. Um, a lot of things you can do with that, digital camera control, digital signage, medical devices, security. So all of those apps can use um, that. And uh, the process is, is, fairly sim is, is fairly simple. Um, you know, at the hardware level, you have the camera. Um, and then you, uh, your hardware abstraction layer obviously gives you a Linux camera. But this is where the um, Snapdragon SDK com comes in um, for things like image preprocessing, um, facial data. And then this is where the, the Snapdragon SDK is. And uh, it feeds that into your camera preview. So that kind of a high level overview of how you would develop a computer vision application using um, the Snapdragon SDK. And just some, some examples of what you can get from, uh, from that, you know, things like uh, coordinate of your face, uh, whether your eyes are closed or open, um, and uh, whether you're smiling. And those are some simple applications. And then there's obviously community support. So there's a website called mydragonboard.org where um, you can check out the, the forums, you can check out the blogs, um, see what everybody is doing with these platforms. You can post your projects. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff. Um, I, did, um, I posted a blog um, just a few weeks ago on um, some of the things that we showed at CES um, 2013 in, in Las Vegas where um, a couple of um, uh, teams that had done things with uh, the Dragon Board and taken the Snapdragon processor into something else. Um, one of them was the photo booth. You know, what could be more simpler and more uh, mundane than a photo booth, you know, where you go in a mall and, you know, f uh, you sit down in a photo booth, you take your picture, you get a bunch of printouts, and you walk away. Uh, well, imagine if you make that uh, experience more interactive and more intelligent. So, um, what we did is we put in the dragon board into a photo booth. So it's a full-on full on photo booth. Um, took the camera that comes with the kit, uh, put it in there, uh, hooked it up to a, to a um, high definition display. So when people came down, sat down, took their picture, uh, there was an app. Um, in this case, was Perfect 365, but it could be any Android app that would allow them to do stuff with their picture. So you know, they got to. Um, enhance their picture and glamorize themselves and um, send the picture to their email or Facebook, um, even print it. So all those options become available um, when, you, you know, when you bring in, um, put in 
you know, the, the Snapdragon chipset or any SOC into um, something as simple as a photo booth. Um, the other one that we showed, which I don't have a picture here, um, was the idea of um, kind of similar to digital signage, but the idea was um, basically taking a um, transparent display. So um, it's kind of a new trend where the display is, is transparent, so see-through. And, um, and there's a lot of applications for that where you don't want the display to be, um, to take up too much space and, and uh, kind of uh, mess up your aesthetics. So we hooked up um, this, the um, SOM, put it into the stand for that display. So now the display is fully interactive. So it's running Android. Um, you can uh, use gestures to go through things. Um, there was a UI showing you. And the concept here was we were putting this into a kitchen. So you know, a lot of times people want to have a computer in their kitchen, but it's, it has all these cords, and it's bulky, and, uh, and all that. So the idea of transparent display, we put in a, a cover, a glass cover on top of it, so it can be even washable. And uh, you, know, you, you spill something on it, you take the cover off, you go wash it in the sink, put it back on. Um, so really cool idea of putting the, um, the system on a module into the stand of this thing. First of all, there's no way you know, water could get, get into it or anything like that. So pretty safe there. All you need is one power cord to power it up, and um, you get a full Android experience on that display. So that was another thing. Um, I, I didn't have any pictures of it to show, but mm, there's a couple of cool videos uh, where people check it out. So. <laughs> And that's all I got. So um, I think we have five minutes for questions. Yes? It's actually based on a chipset called 8060A, which is the equivalent of um, an, a chip called 8960 uh, or Snapdragon S4 Plus. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good question. So um, one of the things we're doing is we actually, um, we're, we're working with multiple companies to create um, SOMs based on our chipsets. And uh, there, are, there are some chipsets that have PCI Express. So when, yeah, when the SOM based on that comes out, you'll get that capability as well. Is there an EVM that I can use now? It's not available now, but will be available soon. Yeah, so, so the idea about the SOM is um, you have the SOM, which has the chipset and everything on it, but it also comes with a carrier board, which gives you all the other interfaces. So every SOM will also have a carrier board. So in the case of 8064, the carrier board will have PCI Express. Um, talk to me. I mean, the, the, we have some, some new announcements um, for, for the, the future SOMs. Um, I think what I, I use the 8060A as an example because it was the first one available and it's the one available today. Um, but maybe I should have mentioned that there'll be multiple ones. So if your application, for example, or your project requires um, an interface that's not in this one, then it may be in, in one of the future ones. It's coming up. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, I don't have a roadmap slide, no. I, one of the things, and, and uh, I think that's a good question is um, Qualcomm as a company, we're, we're generally not an embedded space company. Obviously, it's been all smartphones and tablets. Um, one of the things that has come out, and the reason, the reason I thought this was a good topic is because a lot of the embedded folks are coming to us and saying, hey, look, um, the, the, the SOC turns out to be a great processor for um, all these other applications that we're working on, um, whether it's robotics. Um, there's a lot of medical companies that came to us. So the fact that this song was created and this development kit was created was actually kind of organic. So we, you know, everybody said, look, you know, we need something like this. So we went ahead and created it. Um, I think as more people start using it, uh, we'll probably, you know, obviously we we're working on new you know, companies that we're working with, that are working on new SOMs. Um, we'll provide roadmaps and all that stuff. But it's, it's all very nascent in terms of us 
putting this processor into, um, into the embedded space. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so the sensors, actually, there's the one that comes with this particular development kit um, is actually a sensor board that's hooked up on the carrier board. On, in addition to that, there's a generic uh, connector. Maybe I can go to the picture. I can show you where that goes. So yeah, the question was, where are the sensors? Um, there is one sensor board that's plugged into here. Um, it, has a, it has a few sensors from SD Micro, all on the same board. And it comes with this kit. Um, but if you're putting in your own sensors, um, there is a sensor interface, I believe. It's one of these sensors, but I'm trying to figure out which one is it. Um, There it is, number 13. So it would be this one. That, so it, mm. Yeah, so uh, good question. There's, there's a couple of ways of doing sensors. One is you know, uh, using a native sensor um, implementation. The other one is we have a dedicated sensor core that you can use to, to uh, run your sensors. If you want to do that, um, today you have to go through you know, Qualcomm to, to kind of make it all work. Um, one of the things that the team is working on is, is uh, similar to what I was talking about with Snapdragon SDK, make it, turning into an SDK so you don't have to um, go through that step. So they're working on that. You can if you're not using the, the internal sensor core. Okay? So if you just if it's a standard sensor implementation, then you would just hook it up and there's uh, you know information on how to write drivers for it and, and all that. But that would be a native sensor, right? If you wanted to do the sensor core, then there's an additional step. One of the goals is to take that step out. But say I mean, um, I'll give you my contact information, I can put you in touch with the uh, you know, people to give you more information on that. Yeah. Sure. Um, any other questions? All right. Well, I think that's all we got. Um, again, thanks for thanks for attending this. Uh, you know, uh, as I was saying, we're the the whole putting this this thing out in the embedded space is is uh, fairly new and. Uh, I'm personally really excited about it because I think that um, I, I have my personal vision is that Snapdragon can be, or generally any um, mobile SOC can be the perfect processor for all these intelligent things that we're thinking about. Um, I was walking in Japan and I see all these uh, you know, uh, things that are connected, things that are um, smart and, and uh, you know, and those guys are, I guess a few years ahead, but there's so much more that they, even them, they're thinking about. Um, so the concept of connected home, the concept of uh, you know TVs that are actually smart, um, all the stuff you can do in your automotive space, uh, just ton of things. And uh, so I'm really excited. I think you know there's the there's obviously the opportunity of uh, Android applications for smartphones and tablets, and uh, I work in that area as well. And you know we have a development platform for that. Um, but the one that I'm super excited about is taking uh, these chipsets, putting into all these other things, and then bringing Android and all these um, applications that are developed in Android, all these technologies that are developed on top of Android, bringing all those things and uh, spreading it out across you know, your home, across your office, across your uh, digital life. So um, really exciting space. One last question. Actually, I'm not selling, we're not selling the Dragon Board. Um, like I said, we work with a company called Intrinsic to create the development kit. Um, they're selling the full kit, which is a carrier board plus SOM, for $499, $499 about $500. Bucks. Um, and then the SOM 
the standalone SOM um, is, is also available, and you know, the pricing of it is based on your quantity. So they, you know, the SOM comes with the, the kit for your prototyping, but if you wanted to actually you know, go and create something that you, know, you wanted 10,000 and you wanted 1,000, they, you know, they, can, they can help you with that. Okay? All right, well, thanks, everyone. I appreciate it, and uh, have a great rest of the show.